G'day everyone, Greg here from Fish Play Films and welcome back to the BNSF Bird with Subdivision and Mountain Out of Mole Hill Part 2. So you can see we've put our cardboard strips here, we've formed this part of the mountain and the tunnel area here. Already put some uh, plaster rocks and rock moulds in here, we'll be getting into that a bit later on. But uh, our next thing is to cover this with plaster cloth and then start some of our rock moulds. So let's get into it. Right, so we're at this section now and we're going to put our plaster cloth down on here and you see I've put a rib up through here to get a little bit of a shape and this creates our sort of uh, more cliff face down here as the mountain comes down. Behind here there's just a couple of little bits of cardboard folded out to give this support and so it doesn't fold backwards and that is all really quite strong. So we'll get onto it and we'll put some plaster cloth on this and then we can get back into doing some rocks, starting our rocks on the tunnel face. Let's go. Okay, so we're ready to put plaster cloth on. I've got my bowl of water, fresh water, and my tray to put my plaster cloth in. And I've already measured some plaster cloth. And that's soaking at the moment, so we're just going to pre-wet the areas here, just so the plaster cloth sticks while it soaks in there. Now one thing I did find out that plaster cloth is uh, hygroscopic. hygroscopic, which means it soaks up moisture from the atmosphere. And what's happened, because I haven't used this in a long time, I took the plaster cloth out of the package and of course I haven't used it for months and months and it was starting to go off because it was actually starting to soak up, it's my overlap it there, soak up all the moisture and for the last bit we did around the other, other area around the cutting there I actually had to go over it with uh, a really thin lot of plaster because it was literally almost dry by the time I put it on. I don't know. Anyway, you can see it's still quite clear there. It should be blurring. There's a little bit there, but the plaster should really be coming off here. So what you do if you're going to use plaster cloth when you open it, put it back in a bag, a, a clip seal bag, if you're not going to use it for a while, especially if you're in a humid area, because it will, it will definitely start going off and once the plaster starts to go off you can see that's finding a bit hard there uh, it's well not useless but you have to go out with plaster because it just doesn't stick so we'll carry on with this and when we've done this section down here we will go and have a look at carving some rocks Now this is our last bit of plaster cloth on this hill section. Just a bit of water there, a lot of water's dripped down so you can't, got to be careful not to put too much water on. This cloth, this plaster cloth is, uh, is very difficult to work with because it's so dry. As I said, it's been sitting out in the moisture, in the weather, or should I say just out in the air, and it has sucked in all the moisture from our tropical climate here, even though it's winter and it's been raining a bit. And this particular plaster cloth has probably been, well, open for six months, I reckon. You know, me being so quick on scenery and it's just 
you can see that should be dragging that plaster up there and that should be getting all blurred and I can feel it that it's it's just really spiky and rough so I've had to really really brush this on and for most of this area I'll have to go over with uh, a plaster wash I think now you're probably thinking you know well you don't need to do that because you're going to be putting rocks and that over it and uh, sculpt the mold or as we call it sculpt it down here but the thing is this is your base this is like your bench work for your layout this is the foundation and if this isn't we need this cloth to be strong because under here is just cardboard so we want this plaster cloth to be our foundation our reinforcing or whatever so it really needs to be have some sort of strength to it so we'll just finish I really have to that should be blurring see but it's not so probably pushing the limits with this but anyway it's all right so we'll do this it's not too bad there I'll tell you what it does dry quick though we'll do this and then we'll go up to the top section and we'll start on some rock placing Okay, so we're using uh, these three rock molds here. Now they're all the same molds. So the idea is to try and get them not matching and uh, just try and fit in better. So I've taken this bit here off of this one and I've turned this one around. This one I've taken the end off and also uh, this bit off of here. And then I've taken it and I've got that other little bit that I'm going to sit on there, just out of shot there. So. Now they're sitting away from the top here, which is good because that will give us a bit of a, to try and get a bit of real estate back here and get a bit of a shelf there. Same with this one. And this one will, will go straight into there. But now we can work about that when we do it. Also, because this is away from a bit of a shadow here, we can build ourselves a bit of a shelf there. And what I will do is fill this in 
to marry those two like that so it's one continuous piece and do the same here and here so this looks like one bit all the way through here and then the molds will go from there so uh, let's get cracking right now it's very important to wet the back of your plaster this stuff is so dry it's just soaking that in and you really have to put a lot on there otherwise the glue just you know, you could almost pour water onto this that's not too bad mud on the back there now I could mix up plaster of Paris for this but I find this is just quicker and the uh, drywall mud doesn't go off so you can take your time now I'm thinking do I move I'm going to leave that I'm going to move that over a little bit so there's a gap there so I can do a bit more and blend it in a little bit better but with this one I think I'll butt that straight up to there like that then all I have to do is fill that in there and fill that in there. Da -da -da. More water, lots of water. Of course, if you just cast this rock, you know, yesterday, it would still be quite damp, but these have literally been cast for months. So, see, you know, many ways I could, I could go that way, but you want to get away from that because that mould there is the same as that, so it looks like it's stepping down. So we're going to go that way, I think. Now I can't even remember which way I was going to do it. Yes, that's right. So now it's stepping down. Even these are the same moulds. It doesn't look as bad. And then we're going to um, put this little one on the end there like that. Just give it a bit of a rock and roll there. Oops. I mean, this poor old plaster hasn't, plaster cloth isn't uh, sticking real well. Some of it. Right, so while we're on the, while we're on the move here, let's, let's fill this in. And see what we can achieve. Now, you don't want to do what I did originally and try and get a nice little smooth join because it, then it just stands out like you know what. And you, you don't want it to, to dive in there too much, you know, because you think, oh, that is a natural uh, hollow there. But you could literally, literally leave it how it is. There we go. So I just want to try and get away from that hollow at the top. By sort of doing that, maybe. Ooh, do I leave that? I can hear you shouting. Just leave it, Greg. Just leave it. Ooh, what about that? What about that? And then there's a, a bit there that we could sort of... Oh, you idiot. See, see what happens when you... Right. I think we'll leave it at that right so what I'll do now I might just use this brush put a little bit of water on it and just do a bit of a it's down the sides there like that just to give it a bit of a there we go so there's our so we've done this now, we've blended in this bit here, and this bit here I actually took up, I did finish it there, but I've taken it up to there. And this, this type of rock's probably the easiest because you just really just 
patch, splat the old plaster on and just give it a few little textures and then you can go over it with the brush and spottle a few bits. And this one here, I took uh, straight the way across, like that, and filled it out quite a bit too, so you didn't get another join, another hollow in there. So now we have, I think that matches, that looks pretty good without being too sound. These are three identical moulds, all put different ways, and yeah, that's good. Now what I would have done in my early, earlier days, I would have tried to fill this in here, but of course, no, we don't do that. That will, the soil and dirt will come down to here and give it a little bit more texture so it's not so uh, rocky. So we'll carry on and keep going for the next bit. Now we've got this piece here, which is giving us another nice shelf up here. And we've got, once again, the same mold, but I've broken bits off and I'm going to join that on to there. And that will give us another nice shelf here so the, the horizon can come down and have a little bit more of a platform here. Maybe some trees can go on there. Nice sort of a, a level surface to put some trees on here. So let's, let's get that joined. We need quite a bit of mud behind here. That's all right. So here we go. Let the old plaster cloth down. Really soaking the back of this plaster here because it's been it's been moulded for a long time. I see the water soaking in there. Put some on the edge there. Where we're going to be joining it. That makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? Now what I have done, I've showed before, I've actually had these on a bench so I could see which ones sort of went together before we started. So what I'll do is just put a bit of, um, chuck a bit of mud under here to give it some bit of support there and maybe a little bit in up the top here. to help it just to help it stick right so we've got a bit of a hollow here so we'll um, we'll fill that so it doesn't look like it's joined there but down here um, gee down there's pretty good we could probably leave that I reckon I'd like to fill that bit there And then if there's like a, um, a seam going across, like a crack, try and, so you've got that little shelf here. If we can just bring that through, maybe marry it up to that bit there. Where was I? Down here. So. Bring that through there, so now we've we've joined that to that. Now, what should we do here? Should we leave that? Bit of an opening there. What do you think? Um, oops. Uh, sometimes I've got to learn just to stop touching it and the plaster as well. Oh, there we go. Because what you don't want is to have something really obvious where the joint is, like a different style of rock or something. That would just make it stick out. So just a bit of a blend down there with the old brush. This is a stiffed bristle, I don't know what it is. Um, horsehair, I think, maybe it might be there. Well, there we go, look at that. Get rid of that there, maybe. Get through there. Don't like that little shelf there. There we go. I 
that's flowing through there pretty good. So we've, we've sort of made this little shelf come up here and um, we could maybe fill that bit in, but no, no, that's right. We might put a, a, uh, a branch or, you know, something in there. All right, done. Hmm, right. Well, there you have it. I think that'll do for now. And I'll continue on with the small rocks through here and just blend it in as the dirt coming over and work out how some way to bring the grass down and the dirt down. I've got some photos from uh, Tehachapi, believe it or not. Uh, just a bit of uh, screenshotting. And actually works quite well. So I have to get them blown up. And I can put them up here for reference and work out how to do the... Uh, sort of the soil spilling down onto here and I think but I think that's enough rocks for this section and we have our uh, area here where we can bring out more soil and have a flat area there oh that looks pretty good so we'll do that for now and I'll go away and practice my rock carving and we'll be back in part three of mountain out of a molehill so I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time on the Birdwood Sub here for now thanks for watching bye bye